Greetings and welcome back to room 303 and Senior A English. And we now turn to a, a, a great sonnet, uh, Mary Roth's Sonnet 32, How Fast Thou Fliest, O Time. Let's um, introduce ourselves to Mary Roth on 373 really quickly. Uh, her dates, notice, 1587 to 1651, so you can see, obviously, she's a contemporary with Shakespeare. Born into an aristocratic family, spent most of her childhood in uh, Penthurst Place, one of the great country homes of the Elizabethan and Jacobin periods. She was well-educated and a fixture of the social life of London. Her poems were widely circulated among the elites of her time. She does fall out of favor with polite society after the publication of her romance, The uh, Countess of Montgomery's Arena, and lived the rest of her life in obscurity. Now, Sonnet 32 uh, comes from her sonnet sequence. We talked about how Shakespeare played this game, so did she. Pamphylia to Amphilia, uh, uh, an extended meditation on the nature of love and its joys and sorrows. The turning point in this sequence is the extravagant crown, a set of 14 sonnets that explored the possibility of a spiritual and perfected love and broke with the tradition of the time that focused more on courtship. Let's turn now to Sonnet 32. Again, we're playing the same game, 14 lines. Notice we've got wings, brings, desire, retire. So we've got our, our rhyme scheme, right? To hopes of joy that flatters our desire. To hopes of joy that flatters our desire. Ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum. So we've got the iambic pentameter, ba -bum, an iambic foot. Ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum. Five, pen, five pentameter, right? Let's play the game now of just reading and, ant and annotating this poem. And noticing the ways in which she'll play very similar kinds of games to the Shakespearean sonnets that we were messing with just a page before in Sonnet 12, 60, and 73 of Shakespeare. How fast thou fliest, O time, on love's swift wings, to hopes of joy that flatters our desire, which to a lover still contentment brings. Yet when we should enjoy, thou dost retire. Thou stayest thy place, false time, from our desire, when to our ill thou hast with eagle's wings slow. Only make us see thy retire was for despair and harm, which sorrow brings. Oh, slack thy pace, and milder pass to love. Be like the bee whose wings she doth but use to bring home profit, masters good to prove laden and weary, yet again pursues. So lay thyself with honey of sweet joy, and do not me the hive of love destroy. Now, the idea in this poem of the extended metaphor of the eagle versus the bee is going to be a powerful one. That is to say, time flies. And many of you have said that, right? Time flies when you're having fun. And it probably has never occurred to you to ask, when do, do poets start actually referencing time as the flight of something, whether it be a bird or in this case a bee? Like, when does that happen? And of course, we'll see these kinds of references in our Homer and in our Virgil, but it will be these Renaissance writers that will begin to seek out certain kinds of metaphors to talk about the passage of time. And here, uh, in here that happens. By the way, notice how fast thou fliest, O time, is directly speaking to time itself. So we've got all kinds of interesting personification going on here. On love's swift wings to hopes of joy that flatters our desire, which to a lover still contentment brings. In other words, time and love are coalesced together, seen as flight, and of course, wings that fly to bring about contentment. In other words, all, we're always seeking to have love in our life. Yet, line four, when we should enjoy, thou dost retire. In other words, the very moment that we finally get the thing we seek, namely love, it seems that it just as quickly goes away. In other words, love and time both are extremely brief. Back to the to to the thou now. Thou stayest thy pace, false time, from our desire when to our ill thou 
hasteth, that is to say, hurries, with eagle's wings, slow, only make us see thy retire was for despair and harm, which sorrow brings. In other words, one of the things that makes love, like time, so sad, depressing, and yet precious, is how very, very little of it we have. I mean, even if you find somebody that you're just head over heels in love with for 50 years, and you live with them, I mean, 50 years is not a lot of time, and then it's going to go away. It is a sadness that is endemic to our happiness, right? Stanza three. Oh, slack. In other words, slow, slow thy pace. And milder pass to love. In other words, the argument could be here, let's focus less on lust and more on love. Lust has its day and then quickly goes away. Love, this poet will argue, and many poets will argue, love transcends. Love, there's more time to it. And so she'll say, oh, slack thy pace, go a little bit slower, and milder pass to love. Be like the bee. In other words, instead of being like an eagle, be like a bee. Why? Well, what is it that bees do? They use their wings, but they do something really remarkable, bees. They're always busy at work creating something for the future, right? In other words, their wings are not just for flight. These wings have another use to create, of course, honey. Oh, slack thy pace and milder pass to love. Be like the bee whose wings she doth but use to bring home profit. Master's good to prove laden and weary, yet again pursues. In other words, bees are always working for some greater good. So laid load thyself with honey of sweet joy, and do not meet the high of love destroy. Notice that the word hive is capitalized. It is, of course, a genius word picture. In other words, if time is fleeting uh, on the wing, then I hope that the wing that we're talking about is the wing of the bee, because the bee is always working to create for the hive honey. In other words, this is that notion that there is something that transcends lust, and that something is love. Now, let's jump to 3A really quickly and compare this. Go ahead real quickly and just try to compare this to the three sonnets that we worked with before. Obviously, the notion of the speed, the rapidity of time is central to all four of these poems. What is for you other texts that come to mind that play this same game of the difference between lust and love? We do a lot of texts in 303 that try to play that game. Which one for you is the one that speaks most powerfully to that? And finally, at 3B, for you, when you think about love and you think about lust, do you make a difference, a distinction? And if so, what is that distinction to you? And if you had to choose one or the other, which one of those would you choose and why? Do you think that love starts out as lust and then becomes love? And finally, do you believe that you can ever in your life find a sustainable hive, a love that lasts, at least for a while? Do you think that's possible in the world that we live in today, or is that kind of the old-fashioned view, if you will? Well, I hope that you enjoy and will want to read more of Mary Ross' great, great sonnets. Thank you.